Pre Youth, it's uh, great to be able to talk to you again this morning uh, and I'm so glad you're watching this. I uh, hope you're doing all okay and uh, just praying for each one of you every day. This morning we're starting a brand new, a brand new series, brand new topic, which is called Suit Up, uh, which I'm sure is going to be fantastic. And it's week one, uh, which is called For Your Eyes Only, uh, which sounds really interesting. Um, the Bible verse is from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, uh, which says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Um, now, that's a, a fantastic scripture, which, which I've really, really uh, learnt a lot when I've read through it. And just one thing I wanted to mention to you guys, that um, when you follow Jesus, uh, you're recruited to experience and spread God's love and truth. But we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy, who wants to keep us from knowing the goodness of a full life in Christ. But you can learn to fight that evil. And are you up for it? And that's, uh, that's what this series is going to be all about. So I really hope you enjoy uh, enjoy it and get everything out of it that you possibly can. If you do want to know more about the series, uh, you can check out the Version Bible Plan, which is called Suit Up, which is a fantastic resource. So I hope you really enjoy it this morning and have a fantastic week. Thank you, Pre Youth. There's a story in the Bible about Paul and Silas. See, they were in prison for preaching about Jesus. The Bible says these two guys were sitting in their jail cell singing songs of praise to God, which is crazy because they were in jail, when suddenly there's a crazy earthquake that comes. It broke the chains off their hands and it ripped the door open to their jail cell. See, there's power in praise, power to set people free, power to tear down walls. But don't take my word for it. You can experience it for yourself. As we praise, sing with all your heart to God. Let loose and give it your all. My mercy paid the price. My future came alive. Your love and grace divine. Every moment of my life. You took my darkest.
Today we're doing the Balloon Buddy Challenge. Balloon Buddy Challenge! Woo! <laughs> Wait, is that yep. the phone? You know what that means. Okay, uh, answer it and uh, don't forget the passcode. Okay. The upset llama went parasailing backwards. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay, yes. I'll tell him. Forget the balloons. We've got a mission. It's time to suit up. Hang on for the loop! I'm Agent R. And I'm Agent J. Wait, should we be telling everybody our secret agent code names? Well, it's just a first initial, so I think it's okay. What's our mission? Our mission is one of our field officers has gone missing, Agent Q. He was caught while trying to steal the Declaration of Independence. Uh, that's his first mistake. You shouldn't steal things that don't belong to you, especially if they originally belong to the government. Agreed. But we've been receiving rambling messages from his wristwatch that may be clues to his whereabouts. You know, I keep on asking them to give me one of those wrist communicator things, and they, they never give them to me. All the field officers get the cool gadgets. I know. But we just received another message from Agent Q. It says, for your eyes only. All right. Let's watch it together. Okay, time is short. Uh, I don't know how long I have before they come back, okay? So, in the event of my capture, I left a series of clues so that you could find my location, okay? First things first, you're gonna need to get into my laser-covered box. You know the box. It's covered in lasers. You'll have five minutes to get into it, but you'll need to be careful because it's covered in lasers, all right? So be very, very careful. I don't know what I was thinking trying to steal the Declaration of Independence. I mean, it's like, I know better, but it's also like, I read that on the back, there were like some really funny jokes. And so I was like, I want to see for myself. I mean, if I can, oh, I hear someone coming. I got to go, but there's one last thing you need to remember. Somewhere over the rainbow, blue birds fly. Okay, bye. Well, that wasn't helpful. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, uh... We need to go to the laser room. Why, oh, why can't I? Now, is that... The, that sounds good. Yeah, let's, the, let's go. That's East Corridor, right? Yeah, all right, okay. let's go. There is an invisible struggle between good and evil. Jesus made it clear that we should always be aware this spiritual realm exists. Though hard to understand, it is a matter of life or death, and it involves you and me. Our mission is clearly stated in this verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Special agents, we've intercepted a copy of the enemy's schemes to stop you. Use this communication to educate yourself about his traps. But never forget, good always wins. If you pick up the Bible, you don't have to read far before you meet the main character, God. Yeah, he appears in the Bible's first sentence. And then later on page one, you meet the humans. And there you have it. The two main players in the Bible, God and humans on the stage of our world. Well, not quite. In the Bible, there's actually a way bigger cast of characters than just humans and God. Like who? I mean the figures called the Elohim in the Hebrew scriptures. Angels, the Satan, demons, they're all over the story. Oh right, spiritual beings. To be honest, I've never really known what to do with them. It's all kind of weird. And unfortunately, almost all of our modern conceptions about these beings are based on serious misunderstandings. All right, so let's talk about spiritual beings in the story of the Bible. So first thing we have to do is reorient ourselves to how the ancient biblical authors saw the world. On pages one and two of Genesis, God brings order to a watery wilderness, separating the skies above from the land below. Right, this is earth where we live. And then there's the heavens high above, which they saw as God's domain. But in the Bible, these spaces are not separate. They overlap. 
And in fact, the Garden of Eden is described throughout the Bible as a high mountain garden where heaven and earth are one. So let's start in the beginning. In Genesis 1, God creates a beautiful ordered reality out of darkness and disorder so that life can flourish. He appoints humans as his representatives to rule over all of it and seven times God calls it good. Yeah, I experience that kind of goodness often in the world in things like beauty and truth, love and generosity. But in Genesis 3, we meet a creature who's in a state of rebellion against his creator. We're not told yet why or how he rebels, but he's on a mission to ruin God's good world for other creatures. This thing is trouble. Yeah, this creature is the Bible's first portrait of evil. It distorts what God has purposed for good, ruining and dragging creation back into darkness and disorder. So the humans join the spiritual rebel, which leads them back into chaos and death. And from this point on, the human rebellion is interwoven with a spiritual rebellion. And the biblical story shows how this happens over and over again. Okay, but wait, we're getting all this from a slithering snake? Well, the prophet Ezekiel understood this figure as a spiritual rebel who didn't want to live under God's wisdom and authority. He wanted to be God. All right, that's the same temptation the snake puts before Adam and Eve. Exactly. He says they could rule the world like God, but by their own wisdom. So they're all kicked out of the garden. Yeah, God says this rebel will now crawl on its belly. Where does it go after this? Well, the biblical authors offer subtle clues where this being is at work behind the scenes, animating division and hatred between humans. They also use a variety of images to describe this being. It's a snake or a sea dragon or a dark desert creature or the king of death in the grave. He's also given many titles like tempter or the evil one or the devil, which in Greek means the slanderer. But his name is Satan, right? Actually, no. Satan is not a name. It's another one of these titles, which is why in Hebrew it has the word the in front of it. The Satan means the adversary because he isn't for anything. Rather, he's anti everything, working through lies to drag us back into darkness and disorder. That's intense. Okay. Oh my. Okay. Our clue from Agent Q is somewhere over the rainbow. Oh my goodness. This says don't touch the lasers, they hurt. So we got to figure out how to get in that box without touching the lasers. Ooh, they're a laser cutting device. Okay, so you probably need to go through here to get to there. But Jamie, somewhere over the rainbow? Yes. I think you got to eat these. Really? Yeah, like those little popsicle sticks that have the little fun jokes and messages inside of them. Oh, we have five minutes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through the laser grid. I think yes. That's good, that's good. Okay, you go through the lasers and I'm gonna try to work on these popsicles. Which one am I gonna choose? I'll go with the... I don't mind biting into it, but I have really sensitive teeth and it'll hurt. There's a lock. Oh no. It says the lasers have intensified. You cannot go back through them without using this device. Jamie, what, what was the quit? What, what was Agent Q's message? What did he say? Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere over. Okay. It's not a you. Maybe it's bird. Two and a half minutes, okay. Oh, oh, I see a message. What does it say? Okay, there's K. Okay. Jamie, hurry. 
Okay. The lasers are intensifying. Ah. Oh. One says K. One says D. Oh, one says H. Wait, wait. What's the uh, order of the colors of the rainbow? It's Roy G. Biv. That's the acronym for it. So uh, red. So D. Okay. Orange. Well, Roy. Okay. Uh, G N. Yeah, K. So D H N K. Ah, no, I did it! Yay, it did it! Oh, smart! <laughs> Yay, good job! Okay, so come over here and let's cut through the lasers. You want me to rip through? They're not real lasers because we cut them. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's a puppy. There's a puppy. Are we getting a puppy? It's a dachshund. Okay, secret. Uh, Secret Italy hot dog donkey kept your remote at locked Jamie message. Agent Shark is Michigan. All right, we've got to get back to mission control to find a decoder to decode this. Let's go. In the story of the Bible, there are two realms. The earth, where we live, and the heavens, where God lives. And we've been talking about the spiritual beings, the Elohim, the divine council, angels and cherubim, the Satan and demons. And the last character we want to focus on is humanity. God calls humans to become something more. This is an amazing calling, but humanity is quickly deceived by a spiritual rebel. Yes, he lies to the humans, saying that they can rule and get eternal life on their own terms. And God exiles all of them from the garden. They're cut off from the source of true life. Evil and death now have power over us, and we live in a world of fear, self-preservation, and violence. But God promises that one day a human will come to defeat evil and death at their source and to open up a new way to a reunited heaven and earth. And this promise reaches its fulfillment in Jesus. Right, when we're introduced to Jesus, he's a human, but he's also way more. Yeah, we're told that in Jesus, God and humanity have become one so that he can restore the rest of humanity to its lost calling. And Jesus was tested by that same deceptive spiritual being, not in a garden, but out in the wilderness. Yeah, it tells Jesus the same lie. You could rule the whole world right now if you come under my authority and do things my way. But Jesus knew that that lie leads to death. So he rejected it and was victorious over the spiritual power of evil. And so then Jesus started announcing that God's heavenly rule was arriving here on earth through him. And so he went around confronting the power of death in his healings and his exorcisms. Jesus was opening the way back to eternal life, to rule with God and become new humans. Yes, he also confronted our imaginations by teaching how corrupt spiritual powers enslave whole communities with their lies. Lies like, my tribe is superior to your tribe. But Jesus said every human is an image of God. Or the lie that power comes through force. While Jesus taught that real power requires sacrifice and generosity. Or the lie that peace comes through violence. While he said that true peace comes through self-giving love. This is a new kind of humanity. Yeah, a humanity transformed by God's life and his love. And Jesus didn't just talk about these ideals, he lived them out. So when you follow Jesus, you've been recruited into experiencing the love of God, but not just for yourself. That same freely given love that you experience, you are now supposed to give away freely to the rest of the world. But you will face opposition. I just wanted you to know that up front, don't want to hold anything back. We have a spiritual enemy called the devil who wants to do anything, everything he can to ruin your relationship with God. The Bible actually says that he comes to do three things, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He tempts, he accuses, he lies. The good part is he loses. Because spoiler alert, we already know that God has won the battle. God has defeated the evil. And because we know that, because that is the truth, we stand in that truth and we take a stand against evil. But maybe you feel as though like you're caught in this temptation that really makes you want to do the things you don't want to do. Here's what you do. You stand in the truth of God, that he is there with you and his strength can allow you to say no. Maybe you, you feel like you're trapped under this, this cloud of shame and you can't seem to get out from under it. 
God's love and his forgiveness is there. He's made you new and he has a story that's continuing to be written for you. Maybe you're listening to the lies, the lies that say you're never gonna be good enough to do anything for him. Here's my truth that I know is for you. Evil has no power over you because of the power of God that lives in you. Before you sin, the devil says, go ahead and do it, it's no big deal. Everybody else does it. You're not gonna get caught. After you do it, you're pathetic, you're no good. God doesn't love you. God will never ever use you again. You've gone too far. Before you sin, he lies. After you sin, what does he do? He accuses, you're no good. You're pathetic. You're unworthy. You're unlovable. You are not who your enemy says you are. He has a mission to steal, kill, and destroy everything that matters to God, and he is attacking you with accusations, accusations. The good news is you have an advocate, and he's seated right next to God the Father. And he says, no, that's not true. Let me tell you what's true. There is no condemnation. She is new in Christ. He is forgiven. Oh, that's what he did, but that's not who he is. That's what the devil said, but let me tell you the truth. There is so much more. Don't ever let the devil talk you out of doing what God created you to do. I'll tell him. Okay, they said great work, but they have no idea what the postcard means. I mean, it's all just gibberish. Secret Italy hot dog donkey? <gasps> You don't suppose that Agent Q is secretly hidden in Italy by a hot dog donkey, do you? Uh, no, no, I, I, I think it's a cipher of some sort. That makes more sense. We'll find you, Agent Q! Remember this, there is an invisible struggle between good and evil happening all around you. There will be lies, but don't listen to them. Evil has no power over you when the mighty power of God is in you. Take a stand and suit up. Good always wins. Let's wear our sunglasses for this one. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride. ride! Okay, so knowing what we know now about the spiritual realm, what of the three counter tactics, we've got God's strength, we've got his love and his truth, do you need to focus in on this week? Which of those do you feel like, I need to grow in this area? Because don't forget, we have an enemy and we have lies coming at us all the time but God is on our side. And we have these things in our toolkit to help us along the way. So take a stand and let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are always on our side. God, that you are our defender. But God, we know that there is an enemy and we also know that you have given us the tools that we need to go forward. So God, help us to focus in on those areas that we need to grow in. God, but we trust you and we love you. Thank you for being our God. Amen. You can do this. God is on your side and we're praying for you. We'll see you next time. Big Bang.